Uh, PW recently um, recently launched this new profit share playbook, and I thought as a as a structure for uh, our coffee and profit share uh, class today, we would go through it. So, can you all see my screen? Awesome, great. So, um, I think this is a good way to do this. So. Um, Basically, uh, the profit share playbook is designed to be a tool for market centers, also a tool for for any agent that's interested in um, in profit share. And it starts off with um, with some some details about the KW model. And I think this is worth discussing because um, you know part of our our goal here is to to educate our agents on all things KW. KW's model requires uh, some things. It requires having low fixed expenses. So if you look at the 25 economic fundamentals of KW, one of those fundamentals is, is low fixed expenses. In fact, the way it's stated is, we wanna be a class operation with no frills. And man, we're running into this right now. I was in a, a uh, I was at an event with Lawrence Yun last week, and units are down about twenty percent in twenty twenty two, about twenty percent in twenty twenty three. And if you add those numbers together, units are down about forty percent. And when units are down and prices stay the same, GCI is down, and when GCI is down, company money is down. And if you don't have low fixed expenses, you might find yourself not very profitable. In fact, um, about 50% of our market centers have less than 100% profitability right now. And it stems from a violation right there of the low fixed expenses piece. Am I making sense? Have low to no variable expense. So low fixed expense, we know what it is, and, and, and not very many variable expenses. Now, there are some expenses that are variable um, that we can't get away from. My team leader from Chesterfield's on here. He's a variable expense because when he does a good job, he gets a bonus, and that varies based on how profitable we are. But we don't have tons of variable expenses. Keep a responsible physical footprint. I was at a dinner last night with some of the agents, some of the top agents in my office, and they said, when are we buying a building? And, and you know, what, what, what they didn't say but meant was, when are we buying a fancy building? When are we buying an expensive building? And it is important as a profit sharing company to have a responsible physical footprint. And when we look around our country, our, our company throughout the country, we see lots of market centers that got irresponsible with the physical footprint and are now having challenges. Kelly, you're making a look. Is that, am I saying something wrong? No, no, no. Okay. Share market center, uh, uh, wait, be a training, coaching, and consulting company. Part of our model is be a training, coaching, and consulting company. Share the profits with all who earn them. Build, own, and control our technology and empower a strong AL. That should say C. Kelly, make that note. Empower a strong ALC and open the books. Any questions about our model before we move on to ne the next section? So what we're going to do Russ, here. Yeah, go what, ahead. What's your definition of a strong ALC? That's an interesting word. What does strong mean to you? My definition of a strong ALC is influential members of the top 20% who cap, whose businesses are going upward, who are growing. You do not, you, you should not be on the ALC if your business is tanking, even in a bad market, who keep the culture. So top 20% cappers, growing businesses, keep the culture, and care about uh, the growth of the agent count in the market center. 
And, uh, and then I would add one more thing, no drama. Good question. So the goal of this playbook is to explain profit share and show you how to participate in it. So profit share explained, and we're on page four of this, and, and Kelly's going to drop a link if she hasn't already done so in the chat for I've this. Dropped, I've dropped it. I'm going to drop it again, just for those of you who have joined late. Yeah, got it. So Keller Williams was the first real estate franchise to offer a truly passive source of income called profit share. We distribute profits earned from agents who sponsored other agents into the company. So profit share is not for all. It's available to all. And it is a, and, 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 and understand this, profit share is a reward for helping us grow. So some people say, well, I joined KW and I don't get any profit share. Where is it? It's not for everybody. It's available to everybody as a reward for helping us grow. The market center distributes profits earned from agents who sponsor other agents into the company. So everyone that joins names a sponsor and the sponsor is designed to be the person who was most influential in helping you uh, make the decision to say yes to KW. It might be the first person you talk to. It might be the last person to talk to you. It could be somebody in between. And it's always intended to be the person who was most influential to helping you get into the company. And if you are a W2 KW employee, like my team leader who's on this call, you have a responsibility to make certain that a person chooses a non-employee if it makes sense for them to do so. And here's what I mean by that. A team leader's role, a team leader can sponsor an agent, but a team leader can only sponsor an agent, in my opinion, if there's literally nobody else for them to have as a sponsor. So if a team leader gets a referral from somebody, they push the recruit to name that person. If the, in, in, in the fastest way a team leader gets in hot water is by putting somebody in their downline in their profit share tree who shouldn't be there. In fact, my former team leader who I replaced when I became a team leader, my cousin and my wife were in her downline. How that happens, I don't know, <laughs> but they should have named me and that got that got all screwed up. So, um, so once you, so you name a sponsor and then once people start joining the company under your influence, you grow your first level. And that's, and that's shown in here um, on the diagram, you start growing your first level. And then once your first level starts, uh, uh, talking about KW, that gets to your second level and there are seven level, levels available to you. Any questions about this? So the seven levels, how does the profit share get distributed? Well, you will receive 50% of the profit share created by people in your first level you will receive 10% of the profit share created by people in your second level. And then the rest of the levels up to seven come in at 5%, 5%, seven and a half, 10 and 12 and a half. So let me just say that again. People in your first level, you will get 50% of the profit share that they create when they do a deal that has company dollar that causes the market center to be profitable. So what do you see in those numbers or what questions might you have around those numbers, anyone? They're a lot easier to uh, remember and uh, share. Okay. What's the biggest place where you can win as an agent looking for profit share? Level one. Level, Level one. one is the biggest place you can win because the percentage that you receive as the sponsor is greatest at level one. Level one at 50% is designed to get agents to get into action 
and care about profit share. What's this about? What's that level at 12? What's that 12 and a half percent about? That's where your biggest number should end up being. And that's, that'd be huge. That'd be even bigger than the 50% potentially. See, when you start growing this thing out and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, I think that the 50% is designed to get you into action. And this 12 and a half down here is designed to reward you for staying the course over a long period of time. I've got about 150 people in my profit share tree. I've got about 30 people or 35 people right up here. But I got a ton of money coming from down here. I mean, I've got six light levels right now. And it's because I've been around for a while. Does this make sense? Here's a pro tip that I'd love to share with you. You focus up here at the top. You focus up here at the top. And then you teach the people in your level one how to do how to how to get profit share themselves. And then you teach them how to teach their profit share tree who will then teach their profit share. You get what I'm saying there? Like your job, if you really want to make money in profit share, is to become the educator around profit share. Because, you know, yeah, you can have a bunch of people in your level one, but where it gets sexy is down here at the bottom. Any questions? By the way, the reason levels three and four dip to 5% is just so that we have room down here to increase. That's that's really what it's about. So in the middle of the page are the four steps, the visual representation of profit share. An agent joins KW in the US or Canada and they name a sponsor. That agent is now the sponsor's first level. Step two, the agent pays company dollar as part of their split. Sometimes people call me and say, hey, my recruit, my recruit uh, is, is my first level and they did a deal and I didn't make any money this month. What happened? Often it's because they weren't on a split that month. So they did a deal and they kept 100% of their commission. Therefore, they created no company money, company dollar as we call it. Therefore, they generated no revenue for the company. Therefore, there was no profit created by them. You don't get profit share. Does that make sense? Sometimes, step three, people call me and say, someone in my profit share tree did a deal. And I say, Were they, did they pay company dollar? And they say, yes. And I say, was their market center profitable that month? Because if the market center is not profitable, guess what? You don't get profit share. So the agent has to join your tree do a deal with a split, be in a market center that's profitable, and then on the 21st day of the following month, the money will be auto-deposited into your bank account. Questions about that? And I would encourage, encourage team leaders that if you have people in your market center that are going to receive, so, so, Profit share reports come out approximately the 19th day of the month. Not always. I would encourage you as a team leader or someone in leadership is to text anybody receiving a significant amount of money and congratulate them on, on having profit share. I look at that report every 19th day of the month. I also check it on command. Um, shameless plug about my beautiful granddaughter. I, I check it on command. And I do that because two months ago, I was supposed to receive $890 and I got zero because we had a security uh, breach in my command account. So you want to be checking and making sure that, that you're getting money and that it's actually making it into your bank account. 
Questions about these four steps. Russ, what happens when um, you or somebody in your one of your levels moves to a different Keller Williams office? Is the is it based on the profitability of where the transaction happens or where you are? Okay. I got based you. on the transact where the transaction happens. And for some people like me who have um who who belong to multiple offices, um my sponsor and the six people above her will get profit share from the profitability of my office in St. Louis and the profitability of my office in Denver. Oh. So it has to do with where you are. Got it. Thank you. Uh, I want to spend a minute and just share something on um, I wanted to take a quick look at, at financials just so that you can kind of see a couple of things here. So this is the, the financials of my market. We're an open com, open book company. So I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to show you. This is my market center where I'm OP in St. Louis. Um, this total income right here, this is GCI, right? And total paid out is right here. So in my market center in Chesterfield, Missouri, we pay out one point, last month we paid out 1.5883. And I'm going to divide that by 1619688. We paid out about 92.6% of the commissions we received. Okay. It left us with company dollar of 118,000 bucks. So we haven't gotten to profit yet. We 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 took uh GCI, we took out cost of sales and we're left with our revenue or company dollar. The expenses are the next piece of the the puzzle here. And and then when you look through this um briefly you know, my responsibility is to make sure that we are sticking to the budget. And by the way, as an agent in a market center, like we're an open book company. You have the right to ask to see things. Don't make assumptions about what you're reading, but you have the right to ask to see things. Um, we, we were uh, high in expenses last month because we had some staffing situations that caused us to go over budget. And um, and that happens from time to time. But um, but we took that one six, that 118 of revenue. And from that 118, we pulled out $86,000 of approved expenses. And if you take 118 and you subtract out 86, that leaves you with approximately 32. And 18 of it went to owner profit and 14 of it went to profit share. Am I making sense? Those two numbers add up to approximately 32,000. I'm sharing that just because I want you to see how this flows. So in our market center, $118,000 of company dollar generated last month, $14,000 of profit share. If one agent contributed that whole $118,000, which didn't happen, but if one agent did, then their tree would receive that 14. Their sponsor would receive half of it. Their sponsor, sponsor, 10%. And then five, five, seven and a half, 10, and 12 and a half. The profit share is distributed based on who contributed the company dollar, what percentage of company dollar they contributed. And that same percentage of company dollar contributed becomes the percentage of this profit share that goes up the seven levels to the sponsor and so forth. Clear as mud? Jaden, are you catching all this? 
Yep. Yep. Back to the profit share playbook. So how do you participate? <laughs> uh, four steps. Adopt the right mindset. Conduct a professional business. Grow your tree. Sponsor recruits. And don't forget about growth share. Adopt the right mindset. To adopt the right mindset, you must first understand the KW culture and then understand the power of passive income. Mo Anderson, who joined us on this call last month, recording is on YouTube, says our culture begins with market centers making a profit and then sharing those profits with its agents, but it doesn't end there. We have a foundation that everything else is built on top of. Um, the KW culture really started with Gary saying back in 1983, why do y'all like working with me? And what is it about KW that you most respect? And out of that conversation came our cultural system that we now call the, the Y4C two T's, win, win, or no deal, integrity, do the right thing, customers come first, commitment in all things, et cetera, all the way down to success results through people. Um, to me, when I see success as results through people, that falls right in line with what we're talking about. We are going to grow, not just through team leaders, but we are gonna grow and let all the people participate in the success, enjoy the success, and be part of the success. I used to, as a team leader, say this to my agents, Hey, look, as your team leader, I'm going to hit my goal, my gross goal, you know, for the month. Now I can go out and do it through blood, sweat and tears, or we can do it together and you can get the profit share that results from it. I'm okay doing it by myself, but I'd rather do it and benefit you. Number two, passive and active income. Gary says your money can go to the... Your money can go to other businesses, but your time needs to be spent building your core business. Um, profit share is designed to be a passive additional income stream for those that desire it. And yet we want your focus to be fully on listing and selling real estate because that's the way you make the real money. And that's got to be front and center. In the box, it says, when you choose to become affiliated with Keller Williams, the profit share income that you receive is 100% passive and 100% of your time and focus stays right where it belongs on your active clients and your database. The best way to grow a passive income stream through profit share is to have a kick butt active business through helping people buy and sell homes. And hopefully your market center has a team leader that will take the burden off of the recruiting piece for you. So look at the activity there. What amount of passive income would you need to make? Spend a couple moments and just think about what would you like that number to read? Where would you like that number to be? <laughs> and then maybe spend a moment thinking about the why behind that. Why is that number important to you? So step one here was adopting the right mindset. Step two is conducting a professional business. And um, the universal truth is that most pe that people do business with people they like and respect. Your mission is to be likable and respected by more people on a daily basis. I remember years ago calling this agent and um, I remember this event because this was the last time I actively worked with a buyer. And I called this agent and I was excited because I had cash buyers 
and uh, they were going to pay full price. This was before you had to pay more than full price to get a house. They were going to pay full price, cash, cash, cash. And the only sticking point was they needed to close in three weeks. And I remember calling this agent. She said hello, not very nicely. I said, hey, it's Russ Nolte from Keller Williams. I'm so excited. I'm at uh, uh, Scotland Yard or whatever the name of the street was. I'm about to present you with a full price offer, all cash. I've worked with these buyers for years. This is our fourth transaction. They are going to bring it home. The only catch is we need to close in three weeks. And she said, well, that's not going to work. That was the first thing out of her mouth. Your job, agents, is to be likable and respected. And, and being a jackass agent is not a great way to get profit share. By the way, we did get the house and we did become buddies. Uh, and she is not at KW. Here's how you can do this. Sell houses. Sell housing. Selling houses allows you to interact with other agents and gain influence by treating them with respect and dignity. Profit share is not for KW people that don't treat others with respect and dignity. Choosing to be happy. Choosing to be happy daily is a gift that you give yourself that makes other people want to be around you. By the way, choosing to be happy at home um, is probably should be part of this as well, but you won't get profit share for that. Being engaged, returning phone calls, returning texts and emails, and doing so in a timely manner. Did you know that the typical realtor takes 54 minute, uh, hours, 54 hours to return a voicemail? Showing gratitude. Studies show that saying thank you more often changes your life and the lives of people around you in a fast and profound way. And then show up, show up for your community, show up for your family, your clients and other professionals. Conduct a professional business. So have a great mindset, conduct a professional business. Some best practices on con uh, conducting a professional business. These best practices came from Gary's top agent mastermind. Send gift cards to agents who didn't get selected in a multiple offer solution uh, situation. Uh, give a closing gift to the agent. By the way, you could give a uh, you could give a copy of the millionaire real estate investor to every agent you do a deal with. They've already got MREA, right? Give them the millionaire real estate investor. Nobody's got that book, and we got to pay for some lawsuits. So we got to sell more books. Um, give people a copy of the MREI book. Send a handwritten note to the other agent they close a transaction with, and even when uh, even when it wasn't a great deal. Host a book club, teach, host a happy hour, host a class once a quarter, call to congratulate agents who list and, and sell in your farm, send out a new newsletter with a couple tips, take around open house survival packages, get a broker's license and, and, and be more educated. These are just ways of getting on top of things. One of the top profit share earners in St. Louis, she sends the MRE, MREI book to every co-op. It gets delivered at closing. It starts conversations. And they eventually, many of them eventually join. Because when was the last time you did a deal with somebody and you got a gift from the agent? Anyone? Doesn't happen very often. It happens sometimes, but it doesn't happen very often. Uh, I was at dinner last night, as I was saying, with some of the top agents in my office. And one of those agents got a referral. She didn't get a referral. She got yeah, well, she got a referral, but when she was getting the referral, uh, the, the referring person said, you know, this person normally does business with so-and-so but so-and-so has cancer and she stepped back from the business. And my agent said, you know, I called that agent and I said, hey, I hear you're sick. Uh, I'm, we're about to close on the deal. I know that you didn't refer them to me, but I'm sending you 25% of the GCI uh, as a referral fee just because I know times are challenging for you. And I thought, you know, that's really impressive.
Step three, grow your profit share tree. Um, meet other professionals passively. The easiest place to start to add agents to your profit share tree is by starting conversations with agents on the other side of your transactions. Here's my favorite question. I'm doing a deal with Kevin and I say, Kevin, this has been great doing this deal with you. It's really nice getting to know you better. I know we've never done a deal before. Kevin, I'm just curious. I ask this question all the time. What's the biggest challenge you're finding in your business? And Kevin's going to say whatever he's going to say. We're just talking shop. Or maybe, or maybe I'm doing a deal with Guy and Guy says, man, I can't get these people, you know, I, 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 I can't get my listings under contract or whatever he says. I'm taking notes about the biggest challenge Kevin's having or the thing that Guy shared when he was frustrated. And then I'm going to go to my team leader and I'm going to say, Jaden, Kevin's struggling with buyers who are, who are objecting to interest rates. And I'm going to put connect you guys. Will you teach him that thing that you taught us at the sales meeting so that he can, can get through that struggle? Or Jaden, I'm connecting you with Guy who can't seem to get his listing sold, blah, 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 whatever. Meet other people professionally or passive, meet other professionals passively. Figure out what's bugging them in their business. You could lead generate actively. And, and a great way to do this is to invite people to events. Kelly, what events are we doing in January in Colorado? Uh, social Don't media. Don't put Kelly on the spot. Huh? Social media. Hmm. Oh yeah, we're so excited about this. We're doing a social media summit. I don't know that it's gonna be called that. They're working on a name. They'll have it to me by the Kelly, end. Kelly always blows my names. We're, we're, we're having a social media event. And here's the thing. You're doing deals with people right now. And we don't want to do things in December because who's got time? But you can be talking to people and saying, you know, I saw that thing you do on social media, person that I'm in a transaction with. We're having an event at such and such venue on such and such date. It's all about social media. We're going to be talking about TikTok and Insta and, and all of those other things. And uh, you'll want to come to this because some of the top people in Colorado who engage in social media are going to be speaking there. And we've also got this guy who's really smart named Nick Baldwin, Nick Baldwin, who's going to be joining us for that. And our own Leslie Jackson and our own Leslie Jackson. So you can lead generate actively by getting people to events. You could be inviting people to family reunion because we've got Mel Robbins and Tony Robbins and um, all the Robin, Tim Robbins will probably be there. I don't know about that. Um, best practices for growing your profit share tree, number three at the bottom. Enter all recruits into your database, tag them. Keep notes, follow up, provide resources and pass them on to the team leader. So, <clears throat> so you know how to get a hold of your team leader. And, um, and I don't really like what this says at the bottom of page 13. What I would do is go to locations.kw.com and enter the address of where they are and find the closest market center. That's the easiest way, I think, to find people. Locations.kw.com. You can also go to the white pages and do that as well. And then you introduce them to your team leader. I was a team leader for 10 years. And here's, here's the most frustrating thing around profit share that agents say. They say, hey, hey, team leader, um, I'm talking to this person. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get them. They're going to get, they're going to get in my profit share trade. I'm like, who are you talking to? They're like, well, I can't tell you who I'm talking to yet because I'm working on them. It's going to be great. And we know that that's not ever going to happen. Here's the thing. Your team leader, hopefully, is professionally trained to talk about recruiting all day long. And what you don't want to be is that agent in Colorado that has recruiting breath. Go do a great job on deals. You want to invite 
people to good training. You want to send them to your team leader to solve the problems that you figured out during the transaction that they have. It's invite and refer. Invite and refer. Here's how I do it. Uh, Kevin, remember that a couple of days ago you were telling me that you were struggling with getting buyers under contract because the interest rates are so high? Well, this guy in my office, Jaden, he is coaching everybody in the office with some specific strategies to help them get buyers to sign agreements despite interest rates being at seven and a half. I would love to get you 20 minutes with him to have him share these strategies. In fact, I got two more buyers under contract this week simply by implementing those strategies. Shall I put you guys in contact? And Kevin might say, he sure. might say yes, he might say no. But uh, the idea is I'm not going to recruit him. I'm going to be a resource to connect Kevin with Jaden so that Jaden can share the wisdom. And I always feel like agents respond better to a specific call to action about a specific problem that they specifically have rather than you want to meet with this guy? He's a great coach. Does that make sense to y'all? Now, here's what this requires. This requires that the team leader, Jaden, knows how to coach people, that he knows how to deal with specific situations, and that, and that he is sharing with you specific successes. You know what I'm saying? And by the way, there's only like five or six problems in real estate at any given time. I mean, if you ask an agent today, what challenges are you having in real estate? What are they going to say? Somebody throw out a challenge. What 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 challenges are you having in your business today? Somebody? Affordability with interest rates. Affordability with interest rates. What else? The sellers are, are real hesitant to move. Inventory. We can't get sellers to put their product on the shelf. What else? What other problems do realtors have? Time and money management. Don't know how to lead generate because I didn't have to for the last 10 years or five years. I mean, you know, there's only a handful of problems and a great team leader has a specific story that solves each of those problems. I can give you a couple of my quick stories. Pat Corsault was overwhelmed. She, she was at her limits. She was stuck at 40 units. And we helped her hire an admin and we helped her hire a buyer's agent. And she went from 40 to 80 in 24 months. Won't that be great? The team leader is available to tell you that story. Alan Brake didn't know the name of his kids because he wasn't spending any time with them. He was selling 70 houses. Now he's selling 165 houses. And he spent three weeks in Europe with his wife, Jenny. And he took Dominic... Hannah and Grayson skiing last winter for, for a week. And by the way, I, as a team leader, always remember those names when I'm telling the stories because it makes it makes it more personable. So Alan's my story for leverage. Excuse me, Pat's my story for leverage. Alan's my story for leverage and time and life management, chapter 15 from The One Thing. Andy is my story for move my business from buyer-based to listing-based with the details uh, uh, in there so that when I, as the team leader call you, I can say went from X to Y in such and such time with a specific name. Did that make sense? Guy, did that make sense? So let their team leader do their job. Whoops. There's some scripts on page 15, but we've already kind of done enough of that. Follow up with the team leader. Team leaders are super busy. Team leaders get rejected 75% of the time at the first go around. So we say follow up because this, you don't follow up with your team leader. They might take the rejection as a no instead of a not yet. So follow up with them. Put a little tickler in your system, whatever your system is, your reminders or your command or to do is and, and, and get yourself a weekly uh, 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 reminder 
to prod the team leader. How are things going with Charles? Did he join yet? Is he in my downline? And I will tell you this, I shared with you some situations with where people got stuck in the wrong, the wrong tree. Sometimes it's because they got stuck in the wrong tree. Sometimes it's because by the time the team leader finally recruited the cat, they didn't know who they came from. That just happens. We don't know. We forget. We're entrepreneurial people, which, which means we're kind of disorganized. We don't have a great system. So follow up and remind the team leader. Growth share works just like profit share. The only difference between growth share and profit share is that growth share is outside the U.S. and Canada and profit share is inside the U.S. and Canada. Growth share is a rev share program. Profit share is a profit share program. Growth share is based effectively on the 6% royalty, which outside the U.S. and Canada never caps. Growth share could ultimately be a bigger opportunity than profit share because of that. See, with profit share, because of the cap, there's only so much money you can get. With growth share, if you, if you, if you manage to get a, a massive agent, you could really win. Growth share comes in quarterly instead of monthly. Questions about growth share. Was this a helpful conversation? Yeah, um, you know, Russ, you know, the, uh, I find that it doesn't take much to leave a positive impression these days. One of the things that we're finding is the uh, number of agents that actually leave feedback after a showing has diminished to almost nothing. It is crazy hard to get that feedback. And yeah. simply by showing a house and leaving a feedback, constructive criticism or positive reinforcement leaves a really good impression. Um, the second thing is I just experienced that. I just came back from vacation. I won't tell you where, but somewhere nice and sunny. And there was a, um, I knew there was a KW office there and I wanted to stop by and say hello. And, and I called and uh, well, I got the, I got the answer. Why, why do you want to come in here? I'm like, I, I just want to say hello and, you know, part of my network referral system, just 15 minutes. No, we're too busy. I got a great referral from a local non-KW agent um, in that same location because I need, I just, and I'm a KW agent, right? Imagine how it would be just as somebody off the street. Yeah. So it doesn't take much to leave a positive impression. Yeah. I mean, that's a really great statement. It's also a pretty unbelievable indictment on our on our yeah. industry. I mean, it's pretty easy to look like the best agent out there. You just have to like leave feedback once in a while. Yeah. Do, do normal things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Any questions? All right, everyone, have a great week. And a nice Thanksgiving if it don't